Saltburn has recently been released, and after watching it and releasing a video on it, there were a ton of comments on the video comparing the movie to the 1999 feature titled The Talented Mr. Ripley. I hadn't watched that film before, but I thought I'd give it a watch based on the comments. And it's safe to say that the two lead characters, Ollie from Saltburn and Tom Ripley from The Talented Mr. Ripley, were extremely similar. To the point where Ollie could have been the son of Mr. Ripley years down the line in some kind of messed up weird sequel. Both movies even had a bathtub scene. But that's not the point. I thought I'd compare the two movies, the characters, the ending, and see which one just did it better. So let's get into it. Here is Saltburn and the talented Mr. Ripley, which is better? Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers from both movies. Both of these movies have a core focus on one specific thing. Obsession. An unhealthy obsession and a desire to be the person and have the life that was in front of them. For Ollie and Saltburn, it was about being obsessed with Felix. The aura that he had, the fact that he'd never experienced anything like that lifestyle that he led and wanting to find a way of trying to secure it for himself. And the same can also be said for Tom Ripley and the talented Mr. Ripley. He became obsessed with Dickie Greenleaf and wanted to essentially become him due to the stark difference in lifestyles again. Let's start by looking at the ending of the movies. Within Saltburn, the ending was very much focused around the reveal that we'd waited the entirety of the movie for. We knew that Ollie was obsessed with Felix and that there were sinister intentions behind the fact that he was still at the Saltburn estate after all of the deaths had occurred. He was manipulative, sneaky, a pathological liar, and a psychopath. But it was towards the end of the movie where we saw it be revealed to us that he was responsible for the death of Felix, Venetia, and Elspeth, and that he did it with the intention of inheriting the fortune that the family had, allowing him to lead a completely different life to the one that he was living and had experienced throughout his upbringing. No longer was he the outsider who wasn't as fortunate, but he was the person with all of the wealth, the wealth that people could only ever dream of having. There was never really a sense of threat that was present with Ollie being caught, or the idea of him facing repercussions at any point. So at the end, when he was dancing around the estate, pleased with what was now in his name, it felt like a successful plan that was carried out by him. He'd reached his endgame and he was happy with what he'd achieved, so it was kind of a happy ending for him. If we look at the 90s movie, this was an ending which was a lot darker in terms of the mindset of the character, and it showed that the psychopathic nature of Tom Ripley was something that haunted his mind for his entire life and was going to continue to haunt him at every touch point of his life, even moving forward into the future. He had his Ollie from Saltburn moments in the sense that he wasn't found guilty of the killing of Dickie or Freddie, and he was even getting some money sent over to him from Dickie's father, as he believed that he took the rap for some of the secrets that Dickie was trying to hide. But because Tom had been living his life under the identity of Dickie for a short period of time and got caught up with Meredith in pretending to be him, we saw that even once forming a strong connection with Peter, somebody who he had a soft kind of obsession with and more true feelings for, he ultimately had to go on to kill him because he knew that Peter would eventually see Meredith whilst they were on their trip, which meant that that small part of happiness that it felt like he could have potentially got by being in the clear was drawn short by Meredith's presence and the further murders that he had to go on to commit, a murder that you could tell that he really didn't want to do. So personally, I would say that if you're looking at the core theme of the movies, I would say that I preferred the more dark, bleaker theme of the ending of the movie from the 90s, it showed that there was no escape from the situation that Tom Ripley had forced himself into through his obsession, and the fact that he just wanted to be the person that was in front of him who lived a far more luxurious life, and that it was something that would plague his mind forever. Even once finding happiness, he had to kill the person that it seemed he cared most about when he tried to move on. Whereas with Ollie and Saltburn, he got his happily ever after. Yeah, it was bleak in what he did and it highlighted the psychopathic nature that he had, but he got what he wanted without any consequences whatsoever. Now let's look at the lead characters. Both lead characters were very similar, yet very different in the way that they approached what they did and the obsessions that they had. In Saltburn, Ollie was a meticulous planner and we saw that he'd managed to orchestrate events that were taking place right up until the final moments that occurred. He almost knew what was going to happen before it did, because he planned it. From not knowing Felix, to making sure that he gave Felix a puncture, all the way up to Elspeth being in the coffee shop 17 years later. And despite there being some moments of spontaneity, nothing really ever deviated from the plan. 
When looking at Tom Ripley, like Ollie, he was a very good planner too. He made sure that he met Dickie on the beach in Italy, learned how he wrote his letters, his signature, and did his research on everything that he liked so that he could forge some kind of forced one-sided relationship that we saw taking place. However, the moments of spontaneity that would occur with Tom were a lot more present and caused way more consequences. We saw that Tom killed Dickie in a moment of rage and madness. He was on the cusp of killing Marge and was only stopped because Peter came in. And we also saw that he killed Freddy in a random moment too. So whilst he was good at doing the research in order to get to know Dickie and put in all of the preparations in place to make sure that he wasn't found out to be the murderer, the murders themselves were the repercussions of his state of panic, something Ollie never really had in Saltburn. He was calm, and he planned it so the killings just looked like they weren't done by him. When looking at what motivates both characters, they're both almost motivated by the same sort of thing. Ollie was a student that came from a middle-class background, not upper class, and after being an individual who had no friends and was picked on by the rich, he wanted to become that very thing. He wanted to become Felix because he saw the attention that he got, the presence that he generated, and the lifestyle that he led. And the same could also be said with Tom Ripley. He was a bathroom attendant who didn't have much money and wanted more from his life. He saw how the rich lived and he wanted a piece of that, rather than being considered a leech. More specifically, when out in Italy, he saw how Dickie lived, the lifestyle that he had, the presence that he generated, and the attention that he got once he saw how infectious it was. So both of these characters pretty much had the same motivation. When it comes to being remorseful for their actions, I don't think either of them were. The only sign of remorse that we had was when Tom Ripley went back to his cabin at the end of the movie and was reflecting on the fact that he had to kill Peter. Plus, we also had the moment of Ollie and Saltburn sticking it in the dirt above the coffin of Felix's grave. But I don't think that was remorse in the slightest, or even grief for the individual. That was him grieving the obsession that he had and the fact that it was no more. They were both extremely manipulative people who had kind exteriors but extremely dark and sinister intentions that benefited their own material gain. They would be described as comfort slash gain killers as they both gained from their subjects' deaths. Genuinely, if the both of them were in a room together, they'd probably plot to kill each other inside of their own minds because of what they'd stand to gain off of one another. So who did this type of story better? Well, both of these movies are very similar, and whilst the approaches were alike, they were very different. The talented Mr. Ripley felt a lot more chaotic in its approach with the way that the movie was shown to us. Where a salt burn was shown to us in a timely way which had a nice rhythm and pace to it, which meant that it flowed quite easily. Plus, it was all building up to the reveal at the end. It was gorgeous on the eye, beautifully shot, and definitely had more moments that generated talkability. Whilst Mr. Ripley could have had that chaotic nature to it to almost reflect the mind of the main character, I don't know if that's 100% the case. I would say that after watching both of them, I think I preferred the talented Mr. Ripley, mainly because it felt like there were actually consequences to the character's actions. There were suspicions about him. He had to cover his tracks and we saw that he was a deeply evil individual whilst being extremely soft and kind-hearted on the outside. This isn't me saying that Saltburn is a bad film, because I don't think it is in the slightest. I think it's a great movie, one of the better things that I watched in 2023. But I'd say it just falls ever so slightly behind the movie that kind of did what it did before it did, if that makes sense. So, there you have it. Saltburn and the talented Mr. Ripley, who did it better? If you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. Plus, you can also see what I rated both of these movies. So if you want to see, it's over there. Which movie did you think did it better? Leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.